This is of course just my traditional before the flight meal. So uh, my flight's in about uh, three hours and I'm gonna get into Washington at about 8.30 p.m. So I'm not gonna eat anything once I get over there. So this is it. This is my only meal today. I'm gonna make it count. So I'm at uh, Cast Iron 3. This is one of my favorite all-you-can-eat Korean barbecue places in Flushing. And they're kind enough to let me sit outside, which makes me feel better. And the audio's kind of buggy because my 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 audio pack is out of batteries. Oh, that's cool. A little mini shield. They have the, the bigger shields inside. So outdoors, you get like a little mini shield. Also, they got this bulldog chicken. You know the bulldog, the, the, the spicy chicken ramen thing? Now they have that chicken here. That's pretty cool. And the whole lunch buffet is only $18.95 person which i think is very 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 economical especially when this is my only meal of the day i'm about to stuff my face till they no more stuffing left stuffing is over i'm gonna eat a lot so gotta try out their new skirt steak that is good mm. it's thin it's juicy, tons of fat. When you have like breakfast, lunch, and dinner combined into one meal, you need something with a wow factor like this. Mm. A little salt is all you need, all you need. I've been eating a lot of Korean barbecue lately because when I can, I try to eat more protein and less carbs. So typically what I do is I eat about 100 grams of protein a day. Recently, just the last couple weeks, I've been trying to do it with a low amount of carbs. I mean, I love noodles, so it's been pretty hard, but just to try it out, see, see the effects it has on my body, I mean, yesterday I just went and ate like a bunch of bowls of ramen, but I feel pretty good. A lot of energy. Don't need as much sleep as I did before. I think I'm getting more fit too. Just a pile of meat all for me. I think I've had dreams like this, except in my dream, broccoli never showed up. This is something I never had before. So this is the super spicy bodak chicken. Delicious. Chicken is tender and it lights your mouth on fire. This brand in the last couple years been making everything from dumplings to fried rice. They have amazing sauce that's out, but also incorporating it in Korean barbecue. It's gonna hurt you in a very intense, but very good way. Oh, oh that hurts. That's so good though. All right, guys. All right, yo, safe journey, all right, man? Yeah, take, take care. care. All right, feel full, I feel good. Let's go to Seattle. All right, something really sad just happened. I packed uh, four packs of my soup base, my hot pot soup base. By the way, if you want to get a hot pot soup base, um, I'll put the link down below. I had two tomatoes and two spicy ones that I was bringing with me to, you know, eat in Seattle, and I couldn't take it on the plane. And I don't have a check bag today, so I hope somebody eats it. I don't, I don't care who. Please eat it. It's awesome. Moment of silence for the fallen hot pot soup base. As much as I'm really sad about the hot pot soup base being confiscated, <clears throat> I am kind of relieved because I was going to bring like four packs of my hot oil um, in my carry-on as well. If I saw my hot oils being confiscated as well, airport security might have been called to the TSA because of a sobbing man desperately trying to shove jars of chili oil into his mouth. Thank you so much. Okay. Have a good night. Thank you. That was my first time riding in a Uber in over a year. Since the pandemic started, I have not gotten into an Uber or a taxi. I basically have my head out the open window the whole time. Welcome home to me. So my mission over the next week and this is not gonna be easy. I'm gonna get rid of a lot of stuff. If I can give all my furniture to charity, I would do it. And then just figure out a way to pack the rest of the stuff into my car and drive it to Texas. But before all that, I'm going to bed. Oh, good morning. I missed this. Although it was nicer in the beginning when like there wasn't so many people around here. Now this whole area is packed. So the, sitting on your balcony doesn't feel nearly as private as it did, but there is really no beating this beautiful weather. Yeah, yeah, Seattle, beautiful weather in the spring and summer. This trip, I'm, I'm kind of like feeling a mixed of a bunch of excitement and 
a tad of sadness because I always dreamed about living in this part of the country, you know, exploring the woods, the coast, going on hikes. And I really did not get to do much of that. I mean, I've, I've been on hikes. I went on uh, Mount Rainier. I went to Cascades National Park, which is absolutely amazing, but I just wish I did more. And I love the simple stuff. That's just like sitting on my balcony. I can't even really do this in New York. Summer is too hot and humid. There's mosquitoes everywhere. Here, it's like, it's like mosquitoes avoid this place. Anyway, I only have a few days here, so a lot to do before I leave. And before we get this day started, just a huge shout out and thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. I've been telling you guys about Surfshark Surfshark VPN for a long, long time now. I've been using them for years. If you don't know, a VPN is a virtual private network. And it's something we all need, especially now when basically every single aspect of our lives is online, especially mine. And there's digital snooping everywhere. Like if you try to type in and search for a brand or a product, or even sometimes I feel like I'm just talking about something, all of a sudden I see ads for whatever I was talking about start popping up everywhere. So what Surfshark VPN does is that it encrypts and secures your personal information before it goes over the internet. That way people who you don't want having access to your information won't have access to it. Surfshark also has high clock ID, so anytime someone's trying to get into something like your email, you're gonna get notified right away. Also, one of my favorite things about it, if you're curious what other countries' Netflix catalog looks like, you can actually use Surfshark VPN to, to kind of trick Netflix into thinking you're actually in the other country when you're not in the other country. That way, you get more shows to watch. Unless you're trying to watch Korean dramas using Korea's Netflix, or Japanese anime using Japan's Netflix, because no English subtitles. So if you want to give Surfshark VPN a try, go to my link down below low use my promo code Mikey Chan you're gonna get 83% off your order and you're gonna get three months for free also you can try it out for 30 days you don't like it for whatever reason get your money back I'm gonna sit here just a tad longer you guys missed the uh, leaf blowers which is something I won't miss yeah leaf blowers that are about 7 in the morning here and then shower and going to Chinatown today one of my last times visiting Seattle Chinatown every time I've been here there's never been that many people even before the pandemic get some Mike's noodles I love about Mike's Noodle House is, first of all, the amount of meat they give you. Look at this thing just falling apart. Pull on a little bit with your chopstick, falls apart tender beef. Oh, that's good. That broth tastes like a cow sauna in a good way. Mm. So tender. Oh, maybe I should ask for like something spicy. It would be even better with some hot oil. Love the texture of the noodles. And also that sh really shrimpy, nice seafood flavor in the broth as well, which is such an identifying factor for good bowl of wonton noodle soup. Look how plasticky this is. It's like eating a bunch of thin little rubber bands. Again, in a good way. Mm. This is a place I'm 100% gonna miss when I leave. I hope Texas has something like this. I love it with the noodles put up a little resistance when I'm trying to eat it. All right, I think my moving boxes should be arriving soon, so I'm gonna go home and start packing. This house is getting messier and messier, so I'm kind of sorted things out. This big box of food is going to the food bank. This box I have here um, with some ramen, candy, snacks, Kit Kats, hot sauce. This I'm gonna auction off. This will go to charity. Hopefully we'll get a good price for that. Oh, I discovered something today. So in this building, there's um, there's a bike room. So we put our bikes in there, the room is locked. So today I was I was thinking, you know, I'm gonna go take a picture of my bike so I can auction it off and, and, and have that money go towards charity as well. So I go down there and my bike's gone. Somebody stole my bike. It was a nice bike too. It is my fault I didn't lock it, but like no, nobody locks their bikes down there. And they took my helmet, it was, my helmet is on there. I hope my helmet gives you lice. Whoever took my bike, although I don't, really have lice. I wish diarrhea upon you, bike thief. It was a nice bike. It could have raised a lot of money. I wasted. I got to start putting things on eBay soon so people can start bidding and we'll see what we can uh, get for some of the stuff. I'm putting all my gadgets. I have all these like kitchen gadgets, egg cooker and, and the egg cracker. I'm going to put all these like as seen on TV things together and I'll just sell all that together. And also I have like all my plates and, and, and dishes and stuff. I know there are people who just move into the area. They might, they might need some of that stuff. The bed, I kind of want to sell it on the last day because then I could just have them come in and there's nothing else in the apartment and I'm ready to leave. This way I'm like not completely paranoid. There's random people in my apartment. Anyway, it's my life here and everything must go. All right, back to work. See you tomorrow. I'm leaving in a few days and this, this is the progress. This, it's, I still have tons of stuff in the kitchen and I'm just kind of waiting for my auctions to end. I did get rid of 
the TV and the, the stand and the bed is gone. So today and tomorrow are gonna be big progress days. Well, it needs to be big pro progress days because if not, then I'm kind of in trouble. Anyway, I've been working all morning, so I figured I'd reward myself with some Chinatown hot pot. There's a place I've always wanted to go. Um, they actually shut down for a while because of COVID, so that they're now reopened. Finally, get to check it out. Like I said, I actually tried to go to this place before and I came in and it was like delivery only. Ooh, I already know I want to sit over there. Nice little isolated spot for me. All right, so the sauce bars are full of little plastic containers and they have like kind of like the entire sauce mix ready for you. You can just take this and you can just mix your sauce. It definitely makes the whole process way more sanitary. This is pretty incredible. A halo of meat, three different hot pot broths. What I have here, I got the spicy, I got the tomato, and then I got the chicken. In the tomato, you see pieces of tomato, of course, cucumbers, trumpet mushrooms, jujubes. In the chicken, you see actual pieces of chicken feet and what looks like nyodu or beef stomach. And the spicy is just loaded with peppercorn and chilies. I just wanna taste all the broths here. Oh, that's spicy. Really nice and strong beef flavor. A lot of times this broth, if you don't do it right, it's just really spicy and nummy, but you can't really taste the beef. Not the case here. Beef flavor is very, very pronounced. Really like it. The chicken one. That's like super gelatinous chicken broth. That's really good too. Oh, tomato's really good. Sweet, a little tangy. Comparable to my own hot pot broth. It's comparable. Start dipping the meat in. Extra long chopsticks. Make sure you have the reach to start with the spicy one. Mm. Meat quality is tremendous. That lamb is so tender. That flavor penetrated extremely well. You see how fatty the beef is here. When it comes to hot pot, my philosophy is always fattier the better. This thing basically melts in your mouth. You see this marbling? Oh my God. I think tomato's my favorite though. As much as I love the spice, I think tomato's my favorite. Which is also the case with my own hot pot broth. I really don't feel like the dipping sauce is even necessary. I'm gonna use it, but you got a lot of flavor from the broth already on its own. Mm. Dipping sauce is good, but that meat has already been flavorized by this. This is definitely one of the better hot pot broths I've encountered. Only thing I wish they would change on the sauce bar would be, forget the lao ma, put the Mike Chen hot oil on there. Guarantee you guys, if you haven't tried my hot oil yet, it's much better than lao ma. I'm ready to have a chili oil battle with her. I'm good to go. I think my product is way better. I wanna try some of this stuff that's in the broth, like this piece of chicken. And this is, I think the cumin lamb that I got. Start dropping this stuff in. This thing looks pretty spicy already. It's gonna make it even more so. On top of the hot pot stuff, they also have a uh, mom bean kanji. Mmm, mm, sweet. It's like the way my mom used to make this. Pickle cucumber is really good too. I'm just starting my meal right now, but already really liking this place. Oh, this chicken's so flavorful. This chicken broth in Chinese will be called hua suan. You can get your money's worth. Put tons of meat and ingredients in here that you can eat on top of, you know, everything else. Oh, this is tender. How I judge a good hot pot ultimately comes down to how much fun am I having eating this stuff? Because the more delicious the food is, of course, the more fun the experience. And this stuff to me, better than Six Flags. You gotta remember to wear your hot pot shield though. Now I'm thinking that this halo of meat might not be enough. We might need a second halo. I'm also gonna suggest this cumin lamb that I got is a must try item from the menu. This is the first time I ever cooked something in a hot pot and it came out tasting like barbecue. I also got some blood. I got some tripe. I threw it all up in here. Time to really attack the meat. Oh, that spice is awesome. 
Ah, feeling it. Just about to polish off the final section of the meat halo. Besides the fact that my mouth's on fire, my nose is running, I feel pretty darn good. I think that's the end of all my food. I got like one more try plate to try back there. I'm still starving, so let's go for round two. My second halo has arrived. This thing is so beautiful. I'm pretty sure every time someone waters this, an angel gets his wings. This is gonna be the final round. This, I got some noodles. I'm gonna make some beef noodle soup. Oh, by the way, this halo is different than the last one. Last one was beef and lamb. This one is beef and pork, pork belly. Got a bowl of beef chicken broth noodle soup. Apparently with a side of peppercorn. The noodles are boiled in the tomato broth. Then I put some fatty beef in here and I fill the broth with chicken broth. So this is just like a big batch of mixed yum. Yeah, noodles is how you end every single hot pot meal. Every single hot pot meal. This is a good hot pot break. After I'm done, back to packing. I'm leaving tomorrow and, oh, you can hear the echo now. This place is getting empty. So I'm pretty sorted, I just have to sell that couch and then i'm taking that stuff and that should be it the auction for big bertha has concluded and we raised over 300 dollars just on big bertha alone for feeding america so in total i think over a thousand dollars goes to charity from uh, all my stuff so now i do know what my life is worth at least in seattle about a thousand bucks all right let's go give these to the winners this is daniel and maria they got big bertha big bertha will treat you well I, I promise no broccoli. <laughs> no broccoli out there. Okay, good, good, good. So we eat again. Like I'm 99% packed. I just got some stuff to throw away, some stuff to give to a couple friends, and that is it. Ready for one last meal here in Seattle. My last meal in Seattle, I figured it would be nice to eat it out of my apartment. One last time. They gave me zero utensils. I now have boiling hot pho and noodles and ribs. I have no spoon and I have no chopsticks. Oh, oh my, oh my God. Oh my, oh my God. I, I did not set this up. I kid you not. I left a Chinese soup spoon in my dishwasher by accident. And this is the only utensil left I have in my entire house. But at least I can shrink the broth. For some reason it tastes like oilier than usual and only one pack of sriracha. I really should have double checked everything and asked for extra sriracha. That's definitely not spicy enough. Luckily, I got a pack for the road. And if you guys haven't got this yet, you want a pack, we still have some available. Just go to mikeshotoil.com and you can get your own jar of hot oil. I'm so happy I have this. Oh yeah, yes. I still haven't figured out how I'm gonna eat the noodles. I figure I could just kind of slurp it. Of course, the ribs. Oh, I have now figured out how to eat my noodles. Spicy. The hot oil's got a slow burn, <coughs> especially when it get caught in your throat. My own chili oil is trying to kill me in my throat right now. <clears throat> Fullback is one of the first restaurants I've ever been to when I first moved to Seattle. So I guess it's only fitting that it becomes my last meal. I moved around my whole life. So there's been so many times where I left towns, I left apartments, I left houses, whatever. This is one of the saddest I've ever felt leaving a place. I really did enjoy my time here. Would have enjoyed it more if, you know, I could have rolled my bike one last time. Thank you again, bike thieves. You know, on top of the endless eternity of diarrhea, I wish you that and no toilet paper, ever. But seriously, these past two years, and especially like during COVID, the beginning stages of it, I spent so much time in this apartment, eating so many great foods, met some incredibly friendly people. And just being able to sit on my balcony, like whenever, and just enjoy the fact that 
mosquitoes don't live here. I'm gonna miss it a lot. So to all the food places I've been to, thank you so much for your yummy food and your amazing hospitality. To everyone I've met in the entire Pacific Northwest region, you all are extremely friendly, incredibly nice, and I wish nothing but the best for you. So again, it's with a lot of excitement and a bit of sadness that I move on to the next chapter of my life, which seems to happen a lot. Anyway, to all of you guys in the Pacific Northwest, until we eat again, I'll see you later.